Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with a ZMB3000 Compression Measurements. In this presentation, we'll explain the two different ways of measuring gain compression and compression point using a Rodian Schwartz ZMB3000 series vector network analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of gain compression measurements and also assumes that you're familiar with power calibration and how to perform a power calibration on a ZMB3000. Separate presentations are available if you'd like a short introduction to each of these topics. Let's start with a brief review of compression measurements. Compression is defined as a point where the actual output power of a device, most often an amplifier, is n dB less than the expected output power, assuming a constant or linear gain. In most cases, n is 1, and compression is commonly quantified as the 1 dB compression point, or P1 dB. There are several ways of measuring gain compression, but the most common and the most accurate is using a two-port vector network analyzer, or VNA. One port of the VNA sources the device input power, P in, and another port measures the output power, or P out. The results are plotted as gain versus input power, which produces a graph such as the one shown here. The 1 dB compression point, P1 dB, can then be read or calculated from this plot. Two types of compression measurements are supported on the ZMB3000. The first is the standard gain versus input power measurement we discussed a few moments ago. This measurement is made at a user-defined fixed frequency. Generally speaking, these types of gain compression results will have a shape similar to the one shown here. The other type of compression measurement supported on the ZMB3000 is a 2D measurement, showing compression point as a function of frequency. It's not uncommon for a compression point to be different at different frequencies, but the shape of this curve will vary by device. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll cover how to configure each of these two types of compression measurements on the ZMB3000. The test setup for compression measurements is very straightforward. The device under test, or DUT, is simply connected between two ports of the ZMB3000. If the maximum output power of the ZMB3000 is not sufficient to push the DUT into compression, an additional preamplifier may be needed between the ZMB3000 output and the DUT input. At the DUT output, an attenuator may also be needed to prevent the ZMB3000 from being overloaded or damaged. This is particularly true in the case of DUTs that produce a very high output power. A power calibration should be performed before making gain compression measurements. In addition to improving measurement accuracy, a power calibration can compensate for gain or loss in the signal path, such as that caused by preamplifiers, attenuators, etc. Basic configuration begins by pressing the Sweep Hard key and then choosing Sweep Type Power. Then press the Stimulus Hard key to configure the Start and Stop powers in dBm. This is the input power range to the device under test. The other important parameter is CW Frequency, which is the fixed frequency at which the power sweep is performed. The ZMB3000 runs the measurement automatically. Results are shown as a graph of gain versus input power, that is, the x-axis shows input power in dBm, and the y-axis shows gain in dB. The example shown here is a typical gain compression curve. Gain is mostly linear, or flat, at lower power levels, but decreases, or rolls off, as input power increases. The ZMB3000 can also automatically calculate compression points from the trace. This is done by pressing the Trace Hard key, selecting Trace Statistics, and then enabling the compression point measurement. The default value is 1 dB, but this can be modified by the user. Once enabled, the compression point measurement automatically calculates both the input and output compression points and displays them on the screen. By default, the reference value for the compression point calculation is the first or leftmost point on the trace. In this example, P1 dB is calculated, 
by finding the point at which the gain is 1 dB lower than this default reference value. The reference value can, however, be defined in other ways. For instance, the user can place a marker on any arbitrary point on the trace, and this point will serve as the reference value for compression point calculations. In this example, a marker has been placed at a point on the trace that corresponds to an input power of minus 12 dBm and a gain of approximately 20.9 dB. The input and output compression points are now calculated using this user-defined point instead of the first trace point. The reference value can also be defined as the mean or average value over a range of input powers. After selecting range as the reference value type, simply enter the start and stop input power values. The user-defined range can be indicated as purple vertical lines by turning on range limit line. The mean reference value is then displayed along with the calculated input and output compression points. Now let's look at the other type of compression measurement supported on the ZMB3000, namely compression point as a function of frequency. This is sometimes also referred to as a 2D or two-dimensional gain compression measurement. To start this type of compression measurement, first press the measure hard key and then choose gain compression from the list of available applications. Note that this application requires the ZMB3 K18 license key. The first step is to configure the start and stop frequencies, and this is done using the stimulus menu. Next, under gain compression, the additional measurement parameters must be defined. These include the source and receiving port, as well as the start power, stop power, and the number of measurement points over this range. In addition, an optional wait time can be configured between each of the measurement points. The ZMB3000 can display the compression sweep results in four different ways. The two most common are the input power compression point and the output power compression point. As the names imply, these show the input and output compression points as a function of frequency. The other way to display measurement results is in the form of S-parameters. Standard S-parameter results show the transmission S-parameter value, that is S21, at the compression point. Delta S-parameter is the maximum compression reached during each power sweep. This will usually be the same or close to the user-configured compression point value. The default compression point for all of these types is 1 dB but this can also be changed by the user. Here is an example of a 2D gain compression measurement for input power compression point. The results are given graphically as a plot of compression point, here P1 dB, as a function of frequency. Unlike traditional gain compression curves of gain versus input power, this type of 2D compression measurement curve doesn't have a standard shape although compression point often changes as a function of frequency. Markers and other standard trace measurement or statistical tools can be used to obtain more precise numeric results if needed. The last topic we need to cover is skip linear sweep section. The power sweep performed at each frequency point always begins at the configured start power and stops when the measured gain falls below the configured compression value. This is usually P1 dB. If the linear or flat part of the trace is large compared to the nonlinear or curved part of the trace, time will be wasted measuring the uninteresting part of the trace. The skip linear sweep section function can be used to skip over this flat section, and this can notably decrease overall measurement time when the flat section of the curve is large. The value given for start before compression is used to define how much of this flat region is skipped. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. For the first frequency point, the compression sweep is run over the entire power range from start power to stop power or until the compression point is found. Subsequent power sweeps will start at the start power, but will then skip all of the sweep points between start power and a defined input power. 
This second point is the compression power minus the user entered value for start before compression. The power sweep then continues from this second point as normal until the next compression point is found or until stop power is reached. This process is then repeated for each frequency point. Remember that the goal of skip linear section is to reduce overall measurement time by skipping over the uninteresting linear portion of each power sweep. Let's end with a brief summary. Rodian Schwartz ZNB3000 series vector network analyzers can measure and display gain compression in two different ways. The first is gain as a function of input power, which is the classic or traditional way of measuring and displaying gain compression. The compression point can then be easily read from this plot. Note that this type of gain compression is measured at a fixed frequency. The ZMB3000 also supports a 2D compression sweep, where a compression point is measured as a function of frequency. This is done by performing a power sweep at each point in a user-defined frequency range, and then measuring and plotting the compression point at each frequency point. The ZMB3000 can also skip the flat or linear portion of the gain compression curve, and this can greatly reduce overall measurement time. This concludes our presentation, getting started with the ZMB3000 compression measurements. If you'd like to learn more about compression measurements, other vector network analyzer measurements, or VNAs from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.